Yeah, I think we're live on YouTube now. Oh, so should we just start introducing? And then yeah, let's do that. People can filter in. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, just give me one second to, okay, get everything, make sure everything is all set up. Okay, um, well, welcome to our latest session of Lockdown Film School. Um, we, it's a, a weekly discussion between uh, two filmmakers in the same field. And um, we're going to keep going until the, at least the end of July. Uh, you catch up on past sessions on our YouTube channel, Seventh Row. There's also links to it on our website. Um, we have a few exciting sessions coming up. On Thursday, we'll be talking to uh, writer-director Alice Winokur, and um, that will be at um, 2 p.m. Eastern. And next week, on July 5th, we'll be talking to the actors uh, Lily Gladstone and Frank Mosley. So um, keep an eye out for those. Um, so, but today's session, um, we're gonna be talking about production design. Um, and we're really excited to have two really amazing production designers with us today, um, both of whom we've interviewed for our, our books. Um, so um, we have Susie Davies and um, Susie started as a model maker and sculptor in the 90s and then served as an art director on and off camera. Uh, she's now been working as a production designer on TV and film since 2005. She was nominated for an Oscar for production design on Mr. Turner and has since re-collaborated with Mike Lee on Peter Liu, for which she was nominated for a British Independent Film Award. We first interviewed, well, Orla first interviewed um, uh, Susie about her work on, on Chesil Beach and an in-depth interview with her is, and on her work with Mike Lee is in our book on Peter Liu, uh, Peter Liu and Process and Mike Lee collaboration. And we also have with us today, uh, Stefan Collange, uh, who is a production designer and a costume designer um, and is probably best known for his ongoing collaboration with Joanna Hogg. So he's worked with her on all of her films. Um, on her first three features, he served as both production designer and costume designer. That was on Unrelated, Archipelago, and Exhibition. And on their most recent film together, The Souvenir, um, he served as production designer um, for which he was nominated for a British Independent Film Award. And we actually first connected while he was busy working on the souvenir part too. Um, so you'll watch out for that. Um, he's also worked, served as production designer for My Brother the Devil, God's Own Country, and most recently the BBC miniseries Trigonometry, which will be coming to Canada in July. Um, and so we have an in-depth interview with him and his decade spanning collaboration with Joanna Hogg in our ebook, uh, To Our Memories, The Creative Process Behind Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir. Um, so over to you, Orla, I'll let you get things going. Sure. Uh, so if you're watching now on the Zoom call, there is a panel at the bottom of your screen called Q&A. So throughout this whole session, just uh, if any questions spring to mind that you want to ask our panelists, type them in there. And then in the last sort of 15 minutes of the session, we will be addressing those. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to lead the conversation between our two production designers and the first question I was asked was sort of just generally how did you get into the field of production design and film and how did you sort of realize that that was what you wanted to do? Um, <laughs> well I'll, I'll go then. Um, basically I knew nothing about production design when I was a student when I was at school and I was a little bit naughty, so I, I wasn't very academic at all. So um, I basically, I managed to um, decide that I thought I should go into agriculture. So I went to agricultural college and got a HND in agricultural management and technology, which has nothing to do with what we do now. But, and that was just fun to go to uni basically, or, or college and um, have that time of my life. And then, when I was looking for a grown-up job in agricultural marketing, I started working for a sculptor and model maker to earn some cash. So I was just sweeping his floor, making cups of tea. And he treated me like an apprentice. And I, I was probably about 21, 22. And it was like someone just opened this massive door 
to a world I knew nothing about, but I knew I want, I was, it felt so comfortable. And through him, because he treated me like an apprentice, I started working for lots of other sculptors and model makers and um, designers would come to us and say, build us a 50 foot dragon. We'd build a 50 foot dragon. We'd go to pre-light at Pinewood or Shepparton. And I was like, oh, wow, this is doing my head in. Um, and I'd sit there on pre-light and watch all these different uh, departments work on our 50 foot dragon and we'd walk away and I'd never see why we'd built that or what, what the story was. So I was curious enough to start to think I wanted to know who was making those decisions? Who was this production designer? Who was this art director? So I started assisting for art directors um, and production designers and made this sort of leap across from model making and art directed um, for many years as a standby art director for, I don't know, about seven years. And then I got curious again, like why was the designer telling me to do this, that and the other? And then I jumped into design and it just, it fits me. It felt very comfortable. And um, that's, that's how I made my, my route through basically. Shall I, shall I jump, jump in? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I, I sort of uh, started, um, I'm from a family of civic engineer and architects. And, and uh, when I was younger, I, I hated all of it. And I wanted to be a bit more of a freewheeling artist. You know, I wanted to be a painter. And uh, so I went to art school. And um, same thing, uh, I, I sort of um, um, looked at ways to make money and uh, ended up doing advertising. Uh, so I, I was uh, working in press advertising, all the marketing stuff, making a lot of money, uh, hating it even more. <laughs> and at that point, I, I met people who were... Uh, cinema student in France. And uh, so I was doing uh, uh, visuals for advertising and uh, they became frame, a, fr a friend and one of them one day asked me to uh, copy a spaceship. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I looked at uh, his, his drawings. I, I didn't know anything about it. I love cinema, but not, you know. Um, and I told him, well, I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to make one for you. And I was, I think, in 91. Uh, and so I had the first, uh, it was a short film. They, they, they had enough money to, to, to shoot in Super 35. At the time, it was a big deal for a film school. And uh, I saw that spaceship that I, I, I draw, but uh, just, a, just a visual made by professional sculptors. And, and so it got me completely you know, mad about it. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I sort of tried to move away from advertising towards uh, cinema. And the best uh, thing I could think of was to do short films. And um, in France, um, it's sort of, they're, they're, they're quite organized in, in terms of funding um, short films, uh, the, the CNC, uh, Centre National de Cinematography. Um, is, is, is a really big, um, very powerful um, institution. And so I, I sort of started with friends to do a little production company, <clears throat> did a lot of short films, and, and the production company didn't work out. Uh, so it sort of failed. But um, at that point, I was really hooked. And I was doing, because of my background is art school, um, quite a few sets, little sets, little dressing for, for this short film. And so uh, I moved to, I decided at the end of that production company, because it didn't work out with to, 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 to bankrupt it, bon bankrupt it um, to move to the National Film School. And that's at that point, I decided to be, you know, to study production design. Mm. It was a bit of a societal thing because uh, when the production company uh, sort of collapsed. Um, I sent my uh, all the sketches, the, the the stuff that I did for all these short films, late, <laughs> uh, and 
didn't, I thought of thought, okay, well, if this doesn't work, then I have to sort of, you know, do something else. And so they, they even a month after the deadline, <laughs> they got me, uh, they, they were still interested. So. Mm. Um, I guess I think uh, from the perspective of like a film critic, I think the art of production design on film isn't discussed as much in sort of film culture and film criticism as say like cinematography. And I certainly didn't have a proper picture of what a production designer does before I interviewed one. So could you sort of give people a rundown of your personal process so how you approach like devising and visualizing ideas when you get a screenplay and then the steps you take to making that a reality? I know it's quite a broad question, but. Um, okay, well, I'll go first again, I <laughs> guess. Um, I am, um, so when I get a script, it's often I get a, a, a script before I even have an interview. And that, that first reading of the script I've learned over time now, that first reading your initial thoughts are quite often the ones you come back to. So I think when I first started out, I'd read it again, 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 waiting for something else to, to come, thinking I need to get right inside it. But actually, you know, it's like reading a book. The first time you read a book, you visualize it. You, 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 your brain starts putting those pictures in and it's the same with the script, which has helped in a way because it saves me reading it a million times. So when I read that script, I, I start writing down immediately my initial thoughts, whether it's, and, and I use photog uh, photographers, artists, rather than other filmmakers, as much as I'm inspired by other filmmakers, um, I find just, just erring to some of those other disciplines brings a different vibe, a different feel, a different essence for the film. And, you know, on the whole, writers, you you've got to leave the script as the as the top sort of part of your pr process the the script is god and the the script directed by the director is the the sort of main thing as much as we all want to jump in and and have our own say the production design should be there to complement maybe enhance even if you're lucky but it should complement the storytelling process so um i find a lot of programs these days seem to be really filtered out because there's too many directors you know a producer might have I mean, a director might have 10 producers putting their 10 pence worth in so the last thing they need is a is a designer and a DOP and a costume designer always putting their 10 pence worth in so I, I, I have to respect one person is telling that story obviously you've got a writer and then the director but the director is telling the story so I, I try and respect their point of view as much as possible. Um, for a period drama, it's, it is all about the research at the beginning. And I, I will, I've worked a lot in period dramas, so I absolutely do my, try and respect and honor the design of that period. But ultimately we're not making a documentary. I'm not making a documentary. I'm making a cinematic storytelling piece. So I, I quite often get to a level um, when I, when I've reached my peak of research where I sort of throw it to the back of my brain and just let that inspire me to make then the visual story. So um, for example, Mr. Turner and Peter Lou, there's an awful lot of research goes into that. You have to be absolutely authentic, but the authenticity can stop at some stage because it's, it needs to be visual. It needs to be beautiful to look at. It needs to have um, an aesthetic eye on it. So, I will cut corners when I think it's worthwhile on the period detail because it's a story we're telling a cinematic story. Um, so it's a it's getting the balance of research and using that as an inspiration to um, design the piece according to the director's interpretation of the story. That's mm. how I would go about it. Right. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. I'm I'm going to jump right in because um it's so I, yeah, I completely agree the the. Uh, designer is, I think, in my view, um, in charge of the visual storytelling. Um, obviously, you're sharing that uh, responsibility with the DOP, but uh, DOP is in charge of the photography, and of course, the designer is in charge of um, everything that's photographed. That's not the actors. Uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 
the one too many cooks. You can't have too many cooks. Uh, um, so I, I, I'm also definitely on that side of trying to complete. Uh, for me, good production design is invisible. How do you become invisible? How does it become so obvious, so almost like in a dream where everything makes sense? that you, you don't see the production design, it has to be there. Um, and so it's, it's sort of, I think, the job that we're trying to, to I mean, that's what I'm trying to, 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 to reach. Um, in terms of research, in terms of, um, uh, I think you, you, need, you need to reach that complete understanding of what you're doing, even, I think, I mean, I haven't, well, the very first thing I've done in 91 was, was, was a sci-fi thing, but, but um, I suppose any, any, any project has its sort of, some sort of vocabulary. And so you get to do, you have to understand why, how people were doing things um, and, and, and how something is built. So it looks like that because it's built like this. Um, but I completely agree, you, 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 the, the amazing thing with production design is it's designed for drama. And for characters, and that's that 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 brings it above many other, I suppose, arts or, or, or techniques where you design for what you think is fashion or what, what we think is hip. Or I mean, remember, I've, I'm coming from advertising, so um, I'm quite. Um, Maybe maybe I've got a bit of a distance with 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 all the graphic design and, and we're always trying to sort of uh, uh, work out what are we what, what is the goal we're trying to do um, we're trying to reach in, in advertising and most of the time it's to sell a product. Um, the amazing thing with 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 production design and general filmmaking is that you 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 have the characters you're designing for characters, and these characters have have a life they they, uh, they, they they're from special time. But where I want to jump in, uh, Susie, is um, you do reach a point where you have to sort of let the storytelling go. For instance, uh, I remember researching, um, um, I think it was a Victorian sort of domestic interior for a scene. And uh, the character had to, to, to at their breakfast. And, and I found these milk bottles that, were, that looked like Jack Daniel bottles yeah. at Square. And, and it really didn't work <laughs> for the scene. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to sort of find a, one that is going to be visible and, mm -hmm. and, and don't stand out. Mm. Otherwise, it's like you, you, you find yourself in the scene and are looking at the production design. And for me, that's, that's, that's a failure. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. quite, I think we can sometimes, and I, I see, sometimes you can fall into just making it like a documentary especially on a period drama that everything has to be of that period and of course you know even if you're doing the 60s you're actually doing 50 years previously to the 60s so so you've got that to contend with as well it's the historical fact but also you, you like like Stefan says don't put anything there that's going to jump out if it is a square milk bottle get rid of it because everyone's going to be going what was that? You know, and you don't. If it's not about the milk bottle, it's about the storytelling, and it's purely just to fill, you know, enhance, support that storytelling process. Yeah, completely mm -hmm. agree. And it's quite fun when you come across things, you know, where you know I've done it. I've put 1970s stuff in amongst 18th century stuff because it works. I can visually tell that that fabric works in that moment for that scene, and there's no point me. You know, we're, we're, let alone, this is lovely because we're talking about visual storytelling, but we've got budgets, time scale, all sorts of things to contend with. And that works. So, so making, being able to make those decisions, which you can only make if you've done the research, if you've given yourself an, enough prep so that on the day when something suddenly needs to happen, you're able to make that decision very quickly, very succinctly and, and put a 1970s bedspread or Mr. Turner's bed and it worked and no one, you know, no one's going to phone in, you know, you did that. <laughs> secrets. <laughs> um, Stefan, you've described um, the approach you developed with Joanne Hogg as like method production design. And Susie, you already, or you also told me uh, similar stories about 
having to really get inside a character's head in order to create the environment they live in, like Turner Studio, for example, and Mr. Turner. Um, so how do you, I guess, approach trying to get inside a character's head almost in like a similar way that an actor does? Well, it's it's interesting because obviously with with Mike, I don't get the indulgence to have to sit down and have an hour's chat with with the actor every week to find out how their development of the character is going. But what I have learned from working that process is to give the actors much more respect than perhaps I did at the beginning of my career. You know, um, they're telling the story as much as the actor, as as much as the director. So when they turn up. I want to make. I want to feel comfortable that I've given them the right car. I've given them the right kitchen. I've, you know, all those sort of things. So, quite often on on um, more traditional films, um, we don't have the indulgence of speaking to those characters. So it's a case of really digging deep with the director to see where he's going with those characters, which will then enable us to become slightly schizophrenic and work out what will this actor playing this character that I've read on a on a two dimensional bit of paper, how, how do I think they'll pull that out? What, you know, what car do, do I think they'll be driving? What, you know, all those sort of, sort of things. So, so it's a case of being very respectful that someone else is doing the acting. I'm not an actor, I'm a production designer, but I'm creating their world. So it's, it's, it's a very fine line because obviously um, in the nature of filmmaking, we have to make those sort of decisions. We have to decide what their kitchen looks like or, or, or whatever that character is. So you still take a leap of faith, but it's with constant collaboration with the other HODs, costume, makeup, DOP and, and director. And hopefully we're all talking the same sort of language. So by the time the actor turns up, because quite often they turn up on set and they've never seen it. They have no idea. They're in for maybe a week's work and they have to completely inhabit this world that we've created for them. And um, you just hope that you've done a good enough job so that they don't have to worry about where things are, it works for them. But it's a, it's a fine line, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely, I mean, I'm completely on, on, on that. Um, I might be a bit um, um, assisting uh, sometime with, with production because I'm really trying to <laughs> get in contact with the actors as, as, as quickly as possible. So um, the brilliant thing when you do costume is you, you have the, mm. or an opportunity to do that. Um, and, and that's sort of what I miss not doing costume. Uh, the other opportunity that you, you know, I'm trying to create is uh, with graphics. So obviously sometimes you, you, you're creating an entire and you you need to either well obviously for for for, for periods you you know that, that that wouldn't work but um um whenever you do contemporary and you, you've got photos you've got to be in contact with the actors and that's where i jump in i'm trying to sort of get that that hour uh or, or more if possible with uh, with with them and usually it's it's absolutely brilliant it's absolutely brilliant for me that's that's where everything starts because um I mean, obviously you come with your own, loaded with your own version of the character. Mm -hmm. And obviously they are not the character, they, they are going to become the character. So it's, that, that's when it's, it gets really quite exciting when everybody's talking about that entity and that entity might be, you know, really, I don't know, not, not, a, not a nice person, but you know what they're going to, to, to say at that point. You know what they're going to, and, and, and it bec when it becomes clear, and you, obviously it's something you do with the director and the other HIDs, um, but, but with the actors, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sort of um, skill level, you know, you, you <laughs> and, and so whenever, obviously fittings are brilliant for that. You, you discuss what, what looks good. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, as, as much as possible um, uh, what you call a show and tell. So show them the hand props. Uh, and it's always a great surprise and, 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 and um, something quite uh, rewarding when they come with their own stuff. So, uh, oh yeah, I'm, when I'm boxing uh, uh, in that scene, I found these gloves, they, they really fit me, brilliant. And, do you see what I mean? So uh, it's... Um, it's how you know you'd like to sort of, as much as possible, 
but but obviously, as you said, uh, Susie, um, it's it's not always possible. Yeah, uh, it's sadly uh, it's as soon as pollution kicks in, such a machine. Yeah, and have abilities they might just not be around. Maybe in, you know somewhere in America or who knows. And uh, and so it's uh, emails and trying to sort of do a bit of a hey, you know about your character. I think you know he or she would have that. Um, trying to have that connection. Mm. Um, I was want, I wanted to ask about your collaboration with the other heads of department on a film because I think when people enjoy a film's aesthetic, they often revert to crediting the cinematographer. But could you sort of clear up on your pr collaboration with the cinematographer and like a costume designer who makes what decisions about? overall aesthetics and color palette and things like that. I guess, Stefan, you have an interesting perspective on this as someone who's worked as both a costume designer and a production designer on some films. Shall I continue or do you want to jump in? You go first. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, um, I think, I think uh, as we sort of said, uh, it's, it's, you can't, you have to, you can't have too many cooks. You have to be very humble um, and just offer. I'm, what, what I'm trying to do is to ask the right questions to every anybody, everybody, rather than hey, this is the way to, um, because who knows? Um, <clears throat> and so when I work with the other HIDs, um, so cinematographer, when I, I, I work with cinematographers, I, I'm, I'm trying to make them look good <laughs> by giving them said that photograph well. Um, so obviously I'm going to look at the light sources, at the type of light sources, how do the walls bounce light or not. Uh, obviously you have initial discussions, do you want to have what, what is the style of the film? So you're going, but, but you're offering them already quite a lot of, um, um, you know, it's a simple thing, but uh, uh, you can see, uh, in my opinion, a good set when, when you photograph well, when you have good foreground, second ground, third ground. Uh, so they can they can they can instantly uh, choose to compose the frame, um, and um, so I'm starting I'm starting with these discussions. In a way, I'm, the color come quite at the end for me, uh, unlike it's something that is written. But I'm trying to sort of work out layout. The layout is a big deal, even if it's a location and and. And you just put in some furniture in in the, in the living room. Uh, you want to know the the. You, I'm trying to guess where the camera is going to be, uh, which you can actually because you know if it, it you know where where the light is and and where they will want to 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 to, to photograph. So, and, and whenever you sort of start to have an idea, you discuss and um, you you try to help them. So, for example, on uh, quite a few films, um, you find yourself on location and you realize <clears throat> it's not going to, to cut it. We, we, we won't be able to have a white shot there uh, because you, you'll be stuck against the wall. And um, so, and that, that's thanks to the, 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 maybe the training I had. Um, and now with, with SketchUp, you can do quite a lot of lens projection and stuff. But uh, if I know they want white shots, uh, Either in well, in a studio, it's a, it's a, it's a floating wall, or in, on location, we went into even knocking down walls, uh, so they can have you know that important shot next to the fireplace that is there. Well, there is a wall in the way. <laughs> can we? Can we? Um, uh, and so the, you start with that, uh, and for costume, it's sort of the same thing. You 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 you're trying to sort of have as many connections as possible, and and. Whichever the it, it, the idea of win, it's not. It's a, there is no ego. You shouldn't have ego. That's that's uh, that's actually the wrong filter for this, this job. Ultimately, uh, my dream would be to have an art department where everybody understands what they're doing and are really excited, but can speak freely. Like in uh, apparently in um, I think it's Doctor Strangelove where, where they, I think some lab assistant came up with the idea of the end. It's brilliant. Uh, you know, to you know, one cook, you know, of course, <laughs> to do the sauce. But but um, but um, if you can find a way to to just suggest things, um, then it becomes not about you. It's it's the film that is the star. I think. 
Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's so such a lovely um, description, you know, to try and get people to have a, a, a sort of fair, unjudgmental view of their point of view of that story. Um, I think the beauty is of a, as a production designer is that you get a little bit of time, usually maybe about a month, where it's just you and the and the director and maybe a location manager. And that is one of my favorite parts of filmmaking because at that stage, you haven't spent any money, all bets are off. You can, you can go in every angle and you should go in every angle. You should be regardless of budget. You know, whether I'm doing something for two pounds 50 or two million quid or whatever, at that stage, it's the same on every job. The cut, it's just the, I, I just getting into the mindset of that story of how that director wants to tell that story. And then all the other collaborators come on board after about a month. And by that time, I'd like to think I'm quite confident in, in understanding the director's viewpoint. And it's about trying to get that across to the other team members without, without me going, right, this is how you do it. It's more, more a case of this is what I've learned and I want to share it with all these other collaborators so that we can all sort of join in the same journey. And, and maybe all our journeys are on a slightly different tangent, but we're all going in the same direction by then. And, and I find that the most, um, the most exciting because, I mean, our job is so fun to work with creative collaborators. I can't tell you what a lucky gig it is basically to be able to do that. So yes, working with, the other HODs is absolutely paramount. And as a designer, you have that little edge because you have that month on your own with the, with the director that's usually, it's like gold dust because you get, you get dropped very quickly because then there's with the DOP designer da, 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 and they're off. But that, that first month, make, uh, make the most of the first month um, uh, and you'll be, uh, you'll have things come back to you in spades. It's fantastic. Mm. Um, another collaboration that uh, didn't occur to me until Stefan had mentioned it in his interview with us about the souvenir was the idea of building the sets with the sound design in mind. Um, yeah, given, I mean, you wouldn't think about it because it's production versus post-production, but obviously the design of your sets is, is tantamount to where sound can be captured from and how sound bounces off surfaces. So could you speak to that, both of you? You go, Stefan. Okay, well, yeah, I, see, I, know, I know it's a bit unusual, but um, well, you have to do it anyway. You have to do it, you, and, and people do it naturally. Um, if, you, if you work with a, a good, you know, standby art director, they would not provide the actors with uh, plastic bags because it makes, you know, a lot of bad sound for the mic. Uh, when you costume design, obviously, where you, the, 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 the fabric is, is really important because the way you know, just the sound it makes on the mics could be a real nightmare. Um, on 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 the souvenir, um, 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 Jovan Howard, the 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 the, the sound recorders, the, the we we spoke at the beginning because we were in a not in the sound stage, and we had uh, we had. Um, um, really big vistas through the windows and we used rear projection so uh, we had to really consider that um we were on on we built a set on the on the on the rostrum <clears throat> so obviously that 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 creates a sound so we had to sort of use uh i got him on on on, on in the in the on, on in the studio and we tried different techniques and we ended up Putting some tack and powder between the joints of the uh, on of the what would be the the, 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 the floorboards of the of the of, under the sets, and um, and uh, we were sort of helping with fabric, uh, the type of fabric, so he could have um, a neutral sound recording. Um, I'm, I would dream to, to go further, but then um, it depends on every director is, is, is different. Some people just take sound and Jonah, the sound design is, inc the, they, they, they basically reconstruct everything. So they, they need a really clean sound. Um, and uh, so you, you, you basically need to make, to understand what everybody needs. And once you get there, 
you, you I, I find it quite comforting because everything not everything is possible and it's a good thing <laughs> you, know, you 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 have that whole framework okay now we know what can we do so uh, um and it's the same for costume. Uh, you, 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 you have to, well, as I said, you, you, that's the way you sort of start the conversation um, with, with every HODs, but I mean, especially costume, I think, um, is to sort of understanding what scene by scene is needed and how you can help it. Uh, it's not a case of trying to control everything. But it's true, as, as Susie said, you, you sort of ahead because you have you had more development. And so you had, so I, I usually, because of, you know, um, being into, um, you know, uh, costume as well, I, 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 I developed that as well for myself. I'm not imposing it in any way, but um, for example, with uh, um, uh, Grace on, on the souvenir, um, we started with, you know, the different references and we completely clicked on, on, on that, which is always a really good sign. Um, and that's how I think it should be. Uh, I've got a problem when departments are sort of apart from each other and sort of a bit protective because, um, because then you sort of, you, it's just miss, miss opportunities. Um, I'm very happy to make, and actually I'm, I'm doing the very often anyway, <laughs> to make this, the set neutral because we define that uh, uh, a, a garment or prop is really important in that scene. So for example, on, uh, on, on Archipelago, um, there is no red in the film, save is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 well, that's not red, but uh, he's a writer and he's got a notebook and that's an important prop. So that has to be red. Um, but but, but uh, with, with, um, with the souvenir, we sort of tried to sort of keep the, the the, 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 the palette quite neutral until we know for that scene. And for me, it could be just equally a prop of a costume, absolutely no ego. Uh, if it works for, 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 uh, for the scene, then, you know, uh, so that, that's sort of the collaboration you, you made. What do you think, Susie? I absolutely agree, basically. I think it's um, an interesting, um, process because I think we're all as we're creatives we're we all want to put our stamp on 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 the process but filmmaking is all about collaboration and you can't you can't have anyone being stronger than the other so I think during prep it's all about finding the balance and just gently sort of everyone coming in into line but in the it, it's sort of receiving inf information I think like you said with sound I did a film last year where because the stage space in the UK is so pushed at the moment, we ended up building on a big warehouse, which is brilliant for me because I had space for, for miles and lighting could light it. It was fantastic, ridiculous for sound. Mm. So we ended up having to soundproof the set. So we put soundproof all over the sets, the sets, and this is the height of summer of last summer. So what that did was made the sets really hot. So then we had to put, air conditioning into the sets. I mean, I don't know what, what that will happen now in COVID times because you, we need airflow, but it's it's those sort of things that just giving everyone respect for their de individual departments and, and hearing their voices basically, because ultimately we're telling one story, as I said before, and we all want to come into the same sort of environment to tell that story. And I can't, when you have a, a crew that's all working with the same aim, it's one of the best feelings ever. You know, it's like an orchestra playing together. It's like, it's just, it's, it's just brilliant. And quite often we get that, you know, it's a, we're very lucky to do what we do. And quite often that happens. And uh, it's just everyone keeping an open mind to that process. Mm. Um. So you both have these ongoing collaborations with filmmakers who work in quite unique ways, like Joanna Hogg and Mike Lee. Um, I'm curious whether the way you work with them and the things you've learned through those experiences have affected your approach when working with other filmmakers who obviously work in quite different ways. Go, Stefan. Okay. Um, well, um, yeah. I, I, well, with Joanna, with Joanna, it's it's been a, 
it's building a relationship. You're, you're building a relationship, and 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 so um, it's it's a, it's an artistic professional relationship that um, that that um, that I value immensely because I've I've grown thanks to 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 to, to it. Um, before working with her, I thought that I was going to be hired just because of my skills. And uh, she was the first one who asked me, uh, so, but, but, but what do you feel it should be? And I was, that was amazing. Um, and so, uh, um, and I think, I think uh, on all our projects, she, she puts a great care in, <clears throat> the casting is amazing. Uh, uh, whenever I start to, 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 to know names or know who, who, who the person who is going to, 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 to play that character is going to be, I'm always, it's such a treat. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm always amazed. Um, but she, she put great care in, in, in also the, the different people, how they work together. And so even in, um, you know, the technicians or, you know, the, 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 the technical crew and HADs, they, they are, are chosen. <clears throat> And uh, so, um, uh, how it changes my my work with other directors? Um, I think it's it's you, you can't you can't uh, run away from your experience. So obviously, what I've learned with with Joanna, I'm bringing to any any project. But but you really want to work uh, for 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 um, every every project is a new challenge, a new recreation, a new, um, and the one thing that I don't want to do is to be in a job where I don't, I replicate stuff. <laughs> so it's not a case of, um, it's not a case of, of, uh, of, 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 of taking one, one th things that I do with Joanna with, with other directors. It's a case of, um, of starting again from scratch, from, from something quite classical really, uh, which is, you know, you read us, we, we read us, you, you, you read a script, you completely engage with it. Uh, I find it painful to read uh, scripts that don't engage because I'm trying to sort of, uh, is, it, is it me or, um, and then you, you, you try, try to, 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 to get into some sort of connection mode with, with, the, with the director. And eventually you do, um, and, uh, and it's a new journey and you learn new, new, new things. Um, the, the lovely thing with working several times with the director is you, you, you pick it up where you left it. So <laughs> rather than starting again and, you know, um, you already know a lot of things, you feel a lot of things. There is things that are, it's almost like you finish, your, you know, each other's sentences, which is brilliant. Um, the, the, it's much easier, I, I find, to, to, to do that. Uh, the only thing is you have to also share the, 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 the will to, 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 to evolve and to, to, to rock the boat a bit and not do the, the same thing as what you've done before, um, which, um, which, uh, which is great because uh, with Joanna is definitely the case. Um, um, yeah, I'm, sorry, I, 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 I'm not sure I'm, I'm really answering the question. Um, from from my point of view, um, I think um, my collaboration with Mike Lee has completely redefined how I design. But basically, because I I have the indulgence that he has, I have a lot longer prep. I get to speak to the actors. All those things that we'd love to do in a traditional film, I I get to do that with him. And um, I th I think we have a shorthand. Um, and that's, that helps in that process because not having a script, the first time I worked with him blew my mind. I, it, it was like just walking in, in water. I, I, I didn't know where the ground was. What, what do we do then? You know, where, where do we go? And just those little chats that I'd have at lunchtime or in a recce van or whatever, just send you off in different directions and it's having the confidence to going down tangents of storylines. So whether you're given, you know, a story about a 1960s spy drama, it's, it's just going that extra mile, not Googling everything, sort of just going that little bit further with your team. Um, 
respecting the script at all times, respecting the director's vision at all times. That sort of permeated into a lot of my other work. You know, I've worked with Dominic Cook a couple of times now, and he's he's from a similar background, and I'm sure he would love the opportunity to spend six months rehearsing with his with his actors, and I would love to spend that, those six months with them as well. But it's it's just it, it shifted my mind to the storytelling process in a much more um, sort of earthy way, you know, having having more respect for the the storytelling of how the actors are going to do it and how the director is going to produce that story. Um, so, so, like I say, I just I just have more respect for for that side of it rather than I think I first started. It was just the nitty gritty. It was just the lo logistics. It was just the you know A plus B equals C. Now it's you know a, a massive equation that I thoroughly indulge myself in and enjoy and the collaboration is is all and and that's what Mike's probably taught me more than anything his process is all about collaboration you know he he has um, a team of people and and we we sit and chat with him for you know every every sort of lunchtime during his rehearsal process and it the story evolves out of that so yeah, that's that's definitely affected my my design process. Can I ask you, Susan? Do, do you, so you started without a script? With, uh, yeah, I know, mm. without scripts. And so for I did a short film with him um, for the Cultural Olympiad before I did Mr. Turn. It was like a a running interview for me. Um, so and at that stage, I was literally sat in an office next door to where he was rehearsing with my art director going. What what do we do? There's no script. There's nothing. But day two, so we'd set the office up. Day two, we would have lunch together and he'd say, right, so, you know, we've, we've got a couple of uh, characters. They live in East London. Um, we probably need to find a location for it. So, okay. You know, they have a young family. Okay, so me and the location manager go off and just look for a young family we knew they were sort of lower class, sort of working class, uh, worked in a gym, had two daughters, still lived at home. So we started looking. We knew we didn't have enough budget to, to build this. So we started looking. And then two days later, we'd have another chat. And yeah, fair enough, we needed a gym because one of the kids worked in a gym. So went off, tried to find a gym. Then we come back with, with information and, and he would bounce off with the photographs we found going, yeah, well, but I need an office. Well, I would go, well, maybe I'll build you an office in this space. You know, it's quite unusual. It's a very of the sort of we of the east of London. Um, and that's just how it evolved. And it was the same with Mr. Turner. I mean, the beauty of that, of course, we knew at the beginning it was about Mr. Turner, but we didn't know sort of like the aspects of it. But he was, you know, he's very respectful. He understands filmmaking. So he was able to say he wanted to do the summer exhibition he wanted to do Turner's house in Chelsea and that gave myself and the location manager a good a good run of time to go and find those spaces come back and say right we can't give you the whole Royal Academy but we think we can do this because obviously I'm working to a budget um, and and then he would bounce off that he knew that we could do something so then he would evolve his story and then something else would come in and we'd find say the house in Chelsea um, and then he he came and saw that like five months before we started building anything to realize that okay so I've got a whole house okay so then he goes off rehearses for a bit longer and it just evolves and turns around and I mean sometimes I look back and I'm not quite sure how we do it but we we do do it and he has done it for over what 30 films so it works so you have to sort of jump in. You can't. You can't go. Hang on a minute. This is weird. Not having a script. It's 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 fantastic in a way because all those. As much as a script is brilliant as your anchor point, not having a script is also brilliant because it gives you this opening to research what feels right for you. You know, you sort of really go with your instincts. It's it's really liberating. Yeah. Mm. I, I I completely concur <laughs> because <laughs> uh, you make not yeah the 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 only script no I've I've read a few scripts from Joanna but uh, we ditched the the, the 
unrelated, which was called um, Raw Siena at the time. Uh, we ditched it after a week. <laughs> yeah. So that was during, you know, during prep. And so yeah. that was the same thing. It was the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, but, but then you, you sort of, you have the opportunity to, it sounds a crazy ego, expensive sort of, Thinking. Yeah, indulgent and yeah, expensive but, exactly. But, but I, I don't think it is because you no. you 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 end up saving so much money. Mm -hmm. uh, you realize that because you build from the ground up, and you have to respect. Well, at that point, we need the you know we need the it has to cinemas to bring you up to that emotional state. So mm -hmm. you know where to put the the money, and you need to. Um, I knew on on, on souvenir part two there was. I had to feel a really big uh, um, 100 by 50 meters, uh, as big as the double seven stage. But we, I knew John, I needed it. But mm. therefore, because it was that moment where you, you, you sort of fall in love with the, the, the scope of cinema, like going to Pinewood, that was it. And, 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 and so um, we, we, we fought for it. But you also know, uh, oh no, no, don't worry, I just need a, I just need a corner of a table and that's it. So yeah. you, you can really- Yeah, when you, balance it, yeah. yeah. And you, so when you work from the ground up with the director and, 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 and you, you sort of start to feel how it has to feel, then you, you get corners massively. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, 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 you know you can do you know that scene. You know, in in, in the barracks next to <laughs> the studio, yeah. repaint it, plaster it, done. Yeah. And, and 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 all you know, you can do a, a night scene with. You, you know, you you can call it. So there is never in, for me. Um, it's it's not. John, the the way we by knowing how it has to feel. We, we, we end up we end up optimizing production you know production design you you, you money and, and art but really mm -hmm. the, the, the more the more you, you develop that with the director um, the more you, you sort of I mean I suppose in in, uh, in Peterloo, you, you knew you had to be to be able to to, to be at the the, 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 um, the square uh, the square for the final yeah. massacre yeah. Uh, but, but also I think interesting as as you say is that uh, filmmakers are artists in their own right and there as we know there are a million ways to paint a painting a million ways to take a photograph a million ways to write a book there's a million ways to make a movie and directors all have their different way of doing it and part of a production design is to enable the director to direct his film in that way with Mike it's quite an at an extreme I enable him to have those sets two weeks before filming, as does the production and the producers, enable him, we have a fully dressed set two weeks before we're gonna turn over on it so that the actors can go there, wear their costume and rehearse in the space. That's the way he makes a film, you know, and I liken it to that's the way an artist will paint. Some people will paint with oils, some with watercolors and, and we enable that process. You know, it's, it's maybe at the extreme with him because he will be developing that story quite quite late in the process. But where are the rules? There, you know, there shouldn't there shouldn't be any rules in artistic creation. I mean, that sounds ridiculously pompous. But well, well, you know, or that, that could be the rule. You know, exactly. <laughs> rule. If, yeah. if it's important, if performance is, is yeah. so important, why would you cut corners on on, on that? Exactly. Uh -huh. So I exactly. yeah. And, and, yeah, I mean, I know the producers have such a hard time trying to explain why we need the location for that extra time, why we need the actors, you know, diaries filled up for that extra time, why I need to have it ready two weeks before to enable the process that Mike goes through to make his film. And it's, it's, it's just different. And um, it's, it's great to be able to do that. It's so interesting. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we didn't come the, the same... Uh, but it wasn't we, we when we started with unrelated there was very much the idea of um not doing it um like the industry but try try things so it was very much 
okay, well, we know now the script is this. I add mood boards for the costumes. I, I, I'm very proud of my uh, breakdowns. <laughs> I've got very <laughs> long breakdowns. <laughs> and whenever I come to uh, a first production meeting, it's very important for me to really know intimately what's in the script to a point mm -hmm. where I can say, well, you know, if that's the bedroom of the character, that's what that character sees every time. And I'm trying to really account. So when I break down the script, it's never the first read, by the way, uh, because yeah. I completely agree that the, the first read, I'm just going like, I want yeah. to go to the movie and just be, yeah. you know, reading yeah. a book and having the most emotional, personal experience. Um, mm. But uh, second read, I'm always trying, whenever you see uh, um, a group of kids, okay, a group, what is it? Is, is it four or is it 15? Yeah, uh, yeah. How many? So I put numbers. Uh, really, the accounting is very important um, mm -hmm. because then you start to sort of really make connections and know intimately. But with with John, the same thing. Uh, um, um, and actually, I ended up doing it with with, with 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 quite a few directors as well because they all asked for it. Um, uh, Francis uh, Lee was, was was very keen on 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 um, shooting in continuity. Mm. And that's also a real headache for the <laughs> producers, <laughs> as you can imagine. But yeah. the, the argument is, if you really want special performances, don't, don't hack it so yeah. much. Yeah, and, and it's absolutely so, true. Yeah, and and suddenly you go beyond the script, which is where suddenly people connect and semi impro or completely go improvisation, and. It, 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 and, and, and it's, it's a lovely thing when, you know, everybody feels it rather than, you know, it's projected like in the theater, which is brilliant as well. But um, I think for cinema, you know, you, you, you might want to sort of try different things. So I completely get it. You, you, you know, you, you're sort of COVID ready, aren't you, with your sets? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that's yeah, very true, yeah. They're saying, <laughs> they're saying now, uh, apparently we've got to do the sets before and leave them for three days or so. Three days. I think it's already changed to probably three hours. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, let me pass to Alex now just for a audience question or two before we wrap up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So um, Lisa D asks, um, she says, of course, having a big budget for design is a great thing, but have you found that a lesser budget stimulates a different kind, sometimes better creativity? Um, absolutely. Um, the the process of a production designer isn't isn't reflected necessarily by the budget. You know what I do, I, I'll do the same if it's you know a fifty quid budget or a fifty million budget. I've yet to work on a fifty million. Just saying, but um, I think I think what I quite enjoy is being given a budget. It's like when you first get given a script. You have a blank piece of paper and um, that that bit of paper needs some boundaries on it. And one of those things is the budget and the country and the time scale and all those things. And you start getting lines and you, then you get given this weird sort of shape in the middle. So a budget absolutely enhances how you're going to make a movie. And I look at it more as a challenge. To be quite honest, I think I'd I'd, I'd feel slightly wobbly if I was given you know one of one of those Disney movies of a hundred million but I'm not going to say like if they're listening I would do it obviously but um if you're given a hundred million then I have three cars of all the different colors I'd you know I'd, I'd sort of double up on everything to have that choice but what's the the beauty of a budget is it 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 focuses what you need to say in that scene, in that story, what needs, what's the important bit? Because it could literally be a little bit of detail in someone's kitchen, you know, just one little egg cup. And that, that could be 50p from the local charity shop. It's about defining what needs to be said and the budget absolutely helps. So in a way, I prefer doing those slightly lower budgets because of that, it gives, it gives me a boundary and, and I love a boundary, yeah. Yeah, I, I um... I totally agree with that. I, I've done lots of independent films, and there is always budget is always, you know, seen as an issue. 
uh, not if uh, you have uh, the, the, the connection with the director and um, and and there is and and you, you just find a way, you just find a way. Uh, on, on My Brother the Devil, we needed a big graffiti painted on, on, on the walls in, in Acne. And it wasn't even a budget thing. Acne Council told us, no way. <laughs> and so we, we came up with the idea, well, maybe you can carve something and it's a closer. And, you know, it's just an example, but um, certainly you, and, and, and so certainly it can be done with much more care. And, you know, see, so you bring it to, if you have enough time, you take the, the the initial ideas, and you you sort of give them another another um, you you sort of workshopping the ideas. Um, but but it's true the, the the budget gives you the ambitions of the project, and usually when you when you're working with with series producers, you you don't want to sort of uh, uh, jump into a, a project that has so much ambition. And 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 and, and um, so, so little time, you know, this the, the quality triangle thing, quality yeah, yeah. time, and 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 and, and yeah. money. Uh, uh, is it is it that? Is it quality time? I say I say schedule. Schedule will always change. Script will always be late, and you'll never have enough money. That's my triangle. <laughs> well, yeah, you never have enough money. You never no. have, when you work in, in advertising, there's so much money, but um, there is no time. So you just have yeah. to you throw money at, at the problem. You don't get the best solutions. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of. Um, but I think, I think a, a lesser budget helps you um, be open minded in how to make the story because, it, you know, you, you could look at one script with a low, very low budget, medium budget and high budget. And quite often the low budget will be the, will be the version that, that you make that should, mm -hmm. that should be made, you know, and, and like I say, that, that month when you're with just the director, when you're not talking to the producers, because the producers would probably just throw everything out of the, out of the car if they knew that we were talking about building this, that and the other. But at that stage, until until you've defined what you want to do, because quite often in the in in our department, which is perhaps different from all the other departments, we can get from A to B in a in a myriad of different ways. You know, the saying is you can skin a cat in a in a, in very different ways. So from from getting to that point to that point, there's lots of different ways to get there, and you can go the very expensive route. The very quick route, the cheap route, and sometimes that cheap route actually is the most um, um, special, uh, um, unusual, um, specific, and it has that essence. Because by if you've got that that boundary, you've had to really pull everything out. What? Mm -hmm. How can we build St Peter's Field for two pounds fifty? And and there will be ways of doing it. That's that's the really exciting thing that we have. Uh, completely. I, I, um, I just realized that um, it's, I mean, my, my, what you said about having a hundred million pounds um, budget, I remember when I was at the film school, uh, I went to see 101 Dalmatians uh, uh, with, um, and the designer was uh, Ashton Gordon, and, uh, and he didn't know the budget. Disney what? came and said, you've got, you've got Chapitin, all the stage, yeah. <laughs> all the stages. And you know, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you about. And and what they did was phenomenal. Yeah. But I, and it was amazing. But but, um, but for me, I, 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 so they, they developed and developed and developed, and it was everything was carved and the textures and everything was amazing. Um, but um, I, I, and you know, obviously you want to 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 have that one day. But uh, on the other hand, uh, my experience with uh, pretty much all the directors I've worked with is, okay, so we want to do that. How can we do it? And it's, it's exactly what you said. It's almost like a Y shape. Every single decision, you could either make it big or make it right. And, uh, and, and, and very often right is, is, is in budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that thing, it started with the idea of production design. The, the first production designer was uh, Cameron Menzies. And he's the one who suggested the uh, Zelsnik to burn the back lot of the set for the big fire in Gone with the Wind. So they save yeah. money. 
you made publicity yeah. and, and that, that he was the first production designer because he came with the same, that idea. Yeah. Um, so it's very exciting to be able to creatively spend the money. Um, if you have no limitation, then you know it's it's quite it's it's almost a censorship. You know. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. Or you, I think also if you if you have uh, unlimited again, I've I've not yet, I've yet to be in that position, but I would feel like I would be just filling in the gaps for the production rather than having a voice. I'd be more like a construction manager you know I'd be more like a like just overseeing things rather than creatively designing yeah mm. yeah like a servicing department more than yeah than yeah. Yeah. yeah um so um another question which was does the how does the prep on a period piece compare to a contemporary one and does the same amount of research go into it um, well, um, period dramas are often a little bit longer on the whole, but the same amount of effort should go into contemporary or whatever the whatever the story is. It, it, there, I don't look at I don't when I look at a script I don't look at is it contemporary period or futuristic. It's it doesn't it it sort of doesn't matter. My process is always the same. So the prep period is nearly always about the same as well. It it's, has less to do with the subject matter at that stage. Unfortunately, it has more to do with production. So on the whole, you get um, on a traditional film, probably um, 12 weeks prep for an eight week shoot, I'd say is about average. And, and you use that to the best of your abilities. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, obviously, Susie, you've got much more experience than I have on, on this, but um, I, I, I would approach it the same way. Um, uh, on the last film I've done with uh, Claude Barnard, we, we, it was a contemporary piece, but um, because it was a case of really, um, with an amazing script, written script, um, it was a case of completely blending fiction, uh, fiction and, and, and the real people almost on the documentary level. Mm -hmm. And so we work with um, uh, researchers because we wanted it to be so of that, 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 that place, which, uh, which is Bradford and Asian community in Bradford and the difference between different Asian community in Bradford. I shouldn't say too much, but, but, um, but I think uh, you, 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 and the other thing is uh, if, you sp if you do a period drama, uh, my problem with with, with it is um, why are we doing period dramas, and how come that in in, in when you when you look at uh, period films, very often you instantly know oh yeah that's uh, Victorian times from the sixties, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, just, yeah. And, and I really have a problem with that. So yeah. um, you have to do your homework, mm -hmm. but you also have to so you have to know how it was at that given time of the story, but you also have to look at what you're trying to do as you know we are telling that story for today anyway <laughs> it's yeah. about drama, but it's for today or it's for trying to to reach you know the cinema level which is not going to age which is really difficult um so you 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 you, you end up you know sort of deconstructing the period and um, I, I know uh, we had a lot of discussions with jonah about timelessness uh, even on contemporary uh, um, pieces, uh, um, whenever you have your iPhone out, you know that uh, when the film is going to be released, it's going to be out of date anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You serve it, so you, you you almost want to end and a brand and all. so so um, you you have to you have to define the period markers, and almost, and once it's done, then you can get on with the drama. If, if that makes sense, mm. um, you know. Uh, Sometimes I, I watch period, uh, period pieces, and you got all these set pieces, which are beautiful, you know, with the horse carriage, and yeah. <laughs> um, but then you want to ask yourself, what does it do for the story? <laughs> you know? yeah. And uh, and and if you can do less, less is more, you know. <laughs> if you can, if I can just set it up with just few details, and bam, being uh, in the in the scene, in the drama, I think you're stronger. Um, 
So I would say, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, so you, 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 you have more time because you've got to recreate pretty much everything, you know, or the, the groundwork is, is, is massive on, on period or super sci-fi. But, um, but ultimately you do it for the storytelling and, 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 and so it shouldn't be that different. It's just easier. It's easier yeah. on, on contemporary film because you can go, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> You can you can you can go in the corner shop and get some. Yeah. You know. I think the hardest is sci-fi. Weirdly, I had a I prepped a sci-fi film last year, and I'd, I always wanted to do a sci-fi, and suddenly there it was on a plate given to me. It's one of the hardest things I've ever prepped because that's you've got no reference. It's your it's it's properly yours, just going off in in a in a direction. I'd say. Yeah, sci-fi, I would have liked a lot more time. Unfortunately, that film never got made, but um, I had three months on it that, uh, and I needed another six sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I don't understand that. You, it's, it's very interesting. I was reading for a time. Um, I think the CIA is doing every year or every two years, they're doing that, that um, report on the future, this futurology. They, 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 they yeah. basically it's very, very documented. Yeah. And people are putting money on it. And how is it going to be? So they do all yeah. these, and they, 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 you start the book and they're saying, we, we're getting it wrong anyway. Yeah. yeah. You, can't, you can't predict. So you, you, when you do sci-fi, you, you have to go back to the story anyway. Yeah. Because, you know, even if uh, amazing films like, uh, I don't know, Blade Runner, or, um, it's not the future. It's not going to be the future. It's not the future now. That's so interesting. It's not the future now. No. And that's to take away from those films because they're amazing. But like just even the simple things, like things in the future will be made remotely by 3D printers. People won't be putting nails into a, a spaceship and making a rocket. That's long gone. You know, that's yeah. miles away. It'll be made by robots. You know, it, all of those things, you know, cut glasses, they won't be from Ikea or Habitat. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, we'll be squirting them into our cheeks or something. You know, it won't be won't be the normal way. It's no, but it's, I mean, it's so interesting. But as Stefan says, it it changes. So I'd say that would be where I'd want more prep. Mm. Contemporary you, you, period, we'll stick with it. But future, give me more time, please. I, yeah, it's changing yeah. every day. You you can see it with the alien movies. The first yeah. one is actually still amazing. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. They've got these plastic cups, them uh, uh, vacuum. <laughs> Classic up from the from yeah. the you know and you know and and there's a video camera that's massive at the end. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, no exactly. But but what we know now is is yeah. is like common knowledge to us. You know, like even even our phones now. You know, in in those sci-fi movies, to even ten years ago, they they yeah. weren't having this. You mm. know, all change. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're going to wrap here, but um, thank you so much to both of you. This has been a really um, wonderful conversation. Um, uh, for those of you listening in, we'll be uh, posting, you'll be able to watch a replay of this on our YouTube channel. We'll be posting it on our website. And um, if you want to hear more from both um, Stefan and Susie, we've got really in-depth interviews with each of them. Susie talking about her work with um, Mike Lee, especially on Peter Liu, and Stefan talking about his work with Joanna Hogg um, across all of her films, but um, also a fair bit on The Souvenir. Um, so that's with our book, um, Tour of Memories, the creative process behind Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir at Souvenir Book sorry, the souvenir book.com. Um, and Susie is in our book on Peter Liu, Peter Liu in process, um, a Mike Lee collaboration. And that's at Mike Lee book.com. That's Mike Lee book.com. <laughs> so um, thanks very much uh, for, for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. It was a pleasure. You would. Be good to meet up, but you know, for real at some stage. So <laughs> and more. Really good. Yeah. When a vaccine's been created. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. See you guys. Bye. All right. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. All.